Um, hello, everyone. And today is our great honor to have Her Eminence Dayum Chemo Kosho, also known as Damola, visiting Google and giving us a talk on women's social role. Um, Damola was born in Eastern Tibet. She fled to uh, India in 1959 with her family and moved to the United States a year later, uh, where she helped her husband found the Sajja Monastery of Tibet Buddhism at Seattle in the 1980s. In addition to taking a full-time job and raising five sons, she took all necessary trainings to become a qualified spiritual teacher. She has also actively engaged in educating younger generations on spiritual development and has founded a few Dharma centers in North America. Um, as a featured uh, in the book Dakini Power, Damola is considered one of the most influential female Buddhist masters in the world. So it's a great honor for us to have um, Damona here and give us a talk. Yes, please. And in the Tibetan language, it means the auspicious greetings. The good afternoon, everyone. Greetings from Seattle. Well, I would like to start by thanking all of the organizers, and especially my friend Jessica Huey, for inviting me here, come here to talk about the social role of the Tibetan woman. I must say that I am honored and humbled to be <coughs> the presence of the such a brilliant and uh, innovative young minds. I am Tibetan old woman, Patricia, was born in East Tibet, and. Uh, uh, strong background of the Buddhism, and uh, later I married Sajadachan Rinpoche in Sakya. And uh, as many of you know, we have in the Tibet, there's four set of Tibetan Buddhism, and the Sakya is one of them, which we call Nyingmapa, Gajupa, Sakyapa, and Gelupa. And the Sajadachan Rinpoche's father was the ported uh, throne holder in the Sakyan Tibet. So I married, lived in the palace with many servants around. And uh, then 1959, uh, we were forced to out to exile from Tibet, like all other Tibetans. So then we lived in India, the short period but then the University of Washington uh, brought us to research, uh, teaching research to my um, husband, Dr. Doji Chang, as well as my uncle for the three years grant. So since we cannot go back to Tibet because the, uh, still the Tibet is under the um, uh, Chinese, so we, <coughs> Uh, immigrate to a state in, in the United States. So then I was working like any, like any of you, like working hard, raising, like he mentioned, no one mentioned that uh, five children to put in school, so forth. So I try to keep up with the growing change in the modern world and all its modern gadgets and many cities. I've seen much experience, much in over 80 years that I have lived. Today I speak to you through my experience as a woman and especially as a wife, mother, grandmother, and a great grandmother um, and a Tibetan woman and Tibetan Buddhist practitioner. So very little was knowing to the words of Tibetan women until we lost our country in 1959. Since then, large number of us lived, um, have lived in exile various countries. We have learned to adapt to the culture and the language or whatever country we 
found ourselves living in. However, no matter where we are and no matter what challenge life threw at us, we are strong as people and gentle. Tibetan culture is filled with strong feminine roles and models. So especially like Tibetans always decided uh, major things and from mother. As we are deeply spiritual people, very often our roles model are the female deities. We have Ayatara, the mother of goddess who regarded us all her children and guiding and protecting us and taking care of, which Tibetan we call Dorma, which is savior. She made a vow to save all the sentient beings from the suffering and be reborn in female form in the life, in all the lifetime. We have Ushnish Vajaya, who also gives <coughs> goddess who gives a long life. One of the most powerful protector deity is the female deity, which we call Bande Lamo, who is also protected as wrathful form and created and fear all. And names like Machi Labde, a famous female protector of the 11th century, who initiated several practices of the spiritual development and Kandu Yishe Tsoja, who help us to spread and the Buddhism in Tibet are helped us the great reverence. Women were not very active in the political field before we lost our country. There have been many Tibetan women who were involved in the politic of the uh, regional governance, but such a permanent was not so invisible in the central administrator. But um, for example, like we call, um, for example, I would call, uh, if the leaders, kings, and their the husband died, women take over. So for example, like uh, Queen of Dege, a region in East Tibet, ruled a region until her young son attended major, uh, majority. Queen Tsonghamo, who was very popular leader and did much the promoted literacy and learning during the her region. There was other Tibetan women who played uh, prominent roles in tribes, especially in the East Tibet. Tibetan women have always had a strong rules of a family. And all the family, if they have some big decisions, and they always make by mother. Many households are ruled by uh, matriarchs. An old Tibetan woman were, let's see, matriarchs, okay. And then old Tibetan women are mothers and business owners, nomads, and farmers. In fact, it was not uncommon for the Tibetan woman to be married with the two husbands or three husbands at the same time, and most are their brothers. The living in harmonious in the same household. Of course, it was for the particular purpose of keeping the land undivided. In such a household, as women were always one who rules the roots, 
unroofed. A large number about Tibetan women, uh, four percent become nuns, and also uh, Buddhist nuns. The nunneries were placed of learning, and the women could pursue and educate, which was not really available for the young girls. In fact, both men and women and turn to monasteries and the nunneries for education as these instructions were the sole providers of education in the old days. Secular education was not widespread at the same time, like my time. This is kind of a silly problem, silly, I tell you something I remember. When my aunt, my aunt was a nunnery, a living nunnery, I visited the nunnery quite often. I enjoy it very much with nuns. They have a beautiful voice with the chanting and the singing, and I will try to make the, you know, like, wear the nun clothes and cover my hair for the towel. And I enjoy it very much. I'd go visiting in a nunnery. But I never wanted to be nun. <laughs> the reason why, as you know, in the Tibetan, no matter what part of Tibetan, east, west, or central, all, all over, Tibetan girls and women, they wear all kind of jewelries covered with the hair and head dresses. So I always see they're so beautiful, they, you know, because the Tibetan, in my time, at that time, we don't have banking system. And the jewels was the asset in the family. And the men may have horses or raffles or swords. That's, that's what we have. So this is like silly, I said, you know, I never wanted to be none because I cannot wear the jewelry. <laughs> That was, and today when I think back, it was silly. <laughs> so, so losing our country and living in exile, Tibetan women have played a very crucial role in preserving our culture and tradition in a foreign lands like myself. Now in exile, Tibetan women are well represented in the political fields and members of parliament, ministers, and hold position of power of decision making in the various administrative offices. Today, Tibetan women are doctors, nurses, teachers, lawyers, business owners, artists, and other occupation. Like I was talking today, there's in the Google, I'm sure you have 1,000, maybe 10,000, there's two Tibetan women are working here. So that was, you know, I was very happy to know that. So this is what, um, you know, Tibetan women are today, to can do. So Tibetan people are generally knowing as peaceful people due to our spiritual, practice of generating loving kindness and compassion for all beings. We strive to feel great compassion for others as the does for ourselves. In order to help the more motive us in this practice, we are talked at the early age regarding all the sentient beings as the one's own mother. A mother is regarded as a compassionate one who for nine months carries child within her womb and who continue to love and nurture her children well into becoming an adult. So this is a, it's a, we have to think more a mother is the 
a publication of loving kindness and compassion. So in our culture, and the mother is regarded with great reverence as life force and nurture. So we also think mother protects the child until the child gets eight, eight years old. Even the protect is from the mother's shadow protects the child. So therefore, women are treated with great respect and are equal partner in the, their homes. So and the Tibetan also the now the exile, before exile, you know, Tibetans like, you know, all uh, culture, like we have heard the, you know, like, uh, Tibetan women exile and live to many countries, especially like the United States, many thousands. And first when we came, we don't have an education background as well as a language problem. So many Tibetan women are worked in uh, nannies, housekeeping, and so forth. So I have heard that Tibetan women are very much uh, demand as nannies and caregivers for both young and old people because they have compassion and talk to them when they are young. It is their kindness and compassion and that makes them provide the best to carry and love even for those that are not their own blood uh, or race. Today, working mothers are truly superhuman in their abilities to multitask between their work environment and their home front. However, women are still women and bring warmth and softness and whatever and whenever they are doing. Now in Tibet, now in the Tibetan families, in the, before many parts of Asia and the Tibet, it's always the, when the the family have a child, they always like to have a boy. It's like many parts in the world before. Now in the Tibetan family, when the girls was born, the parents um, express great joy and they will have someone who will look after them after they get old. So the, you know, time changes. So Tibetan women, like the women around the world, have faced a challenge due to the gender bias. However, we have very compassionate spiritual leader, His Holiness the Dalai Lama. Through his many initiatives, His Holiness has encouraged Tibetan women to be part of governance and social econ economic E economic growth in the exile. Even recently, in the 19, uh, 2016, last year, His Holiness confirmed a Geshe Ma degree and the 29th in South India, which is the first in the history of Tibet and the Tibetan people. The Geshe Ma degree is, or Geshe, a man uh, compatible to the doctrine in the philosophy. And the degree is confirmed after 21 years of rigorous study of five main Buddhist texts. 
This is the step forward in the equal right in the Tibetan woman, as education is the key to changing and development. I would like to envision to future where women are equal partner in the all the field of life. In the workforce, I would like to see women being equally compensated for her time and effort. I hope this, that they will come to time when women are not afraid to go where they want and what they want to do. At the home, a woman is the daughter, sister, mother, wife. Home should be the safe, even from the old trail and challenge of the outside world, if they are around in the home. Unfortunately, the world is not perfect place and women will continue to face discrimination at the work, abuse at home, and the disparity due to the, her gender. It is true that even today, there are countries where the women are treated little better than cattle. However, we can still strive to change the plight of women all over. If women are united in the common cause, if they are afraid, if they are afraid to tell other women, we need to speak openly. If you are abused, tell other women. If you are happily increase it by sharing, uh, uh, sharing your happiness. If you are sad, lighten it by sharing your story with someone. We live in the age of social media, which is powerful tools, all of you now. So solve yourself to being a woman and embarrass other women to form a strong circle of support. Women, women can bear great pain, like women is the one who brings the child. Women have to go through the, all the pains, and not men. But men have realized how to share what pain's going through women, and come out uh, but if even there is painful, come out shiny in the end. We are mother, wife, daughter, and we are strong. If we should have more female leaders in the world, we would be more peaceful place and women have the innate quality of patience and compassion and no war in the world. Like Ayatara, we should feel honored and proud to be born in a woman, and we can do much as women of the knowledge and compassion. Tibetan women are always strong, and we remain strong and since our exposure to the outside world. We are inspired by women in the West who stand shoulder to shoulder with men while still holding down in the fort at home. I inspired to African women, African American women who made sure their voice were heard in their movement in the civil right. I pay homage to all 
the great women who have come before us and struggle with the restraint of time and uh, prejudice and who have made the path easier for us now follow. So this is part of our Tibetan women, uh, how went through, how we still how are. So uh, in, if you have any question. Okay, th thank you, Donna, for your uh, such an inspiring talk. So I want to take this chance to, to ask the first question. As you just mentioned that uh, um, you think that w uh, women should take a more leadership role in the world, in the modern world. And so I wonder uh, what kind of a Buddhist teachings can help women to become more confident, more capable for taking the leadership role. Well, uh, Lord Buddha Shakyamuni, as he teaches us, no gender, women, men, any age, any race, is equally we can be enlightened and equally. But is the the world is a little bit crazy and the misunderstanding and things. It, things getting better, but I still think women should be strong and they should be, you know, how to say, um, have own courage and, uh, uh, and think that we are happy and to be born with this and we want to help with whatever we can and, and make, uh, you know, yourself don't try to lower down to make think we all the ego and the teaching says all the ego there is like mm, the the uh, lay practitioner or tibetans monks lamas or all the practitioner and equally enlightened what they do the right path right route it's most important is motivation Thank you. And also, I'm uh, particularly interested in Sajjan lineage because I know that so far all the throne holders of Sajjan lineage have been male members of the Sajjan family. I wonder if in the future, maybe a female member can also be a leader. Do you think that's possible? Very good, good question. Just like I mentioned earlier, in the Tibetan Buddhism, there's four set in Buddhism. And it's like those all four sets. Many are have the reincarnations, which just like you already know, it's like Dalai Lama is like 14 reincarnated, and so is Kamapa like 17 reincarnated, and thus unlike Sakyapa. Sakyapa originally uh, descended from celestial realm, and a uh, person from celestial realm, and married with a human and it produced uh, children. And that's why lineage carry on. There is no reincarnation, father to son. And so this is uh, it's a different than reincarnation. And uh, so other lamas still recognize and reincarnation, like we all, we all are somebody's reincarnation anyway. So that, unlike the uh, Satyapa lineage. And uh, like you uh, mentioned, yes, it's a true. Now, up to my time, there is always the male system, and I heard a lot of such a history when the Lama married and uh, don't have a son, and then maybe have to marry second or third wife until they bring son. And uh, so I remember myself when I got married with my husband. My father-in-law gave a blessing with name change, like it also says, bring son. <laughs> <laughs> so likewise that, but today is different. But they have, if they have a daughter, daughter is equally teach, Sakya, any teaching. But daughter's son is not be the uh, Sakya Kuen lineage. They are Kuen lineage, but it's not the same as male. So that's it's different. But it's just the Sakya is the, always the lineage, father to son. When they passed away, they will pray to be born the same family. This is up to over 1,000, maybe close to 2,000 years. 
Thank you. Yeah, I understand this is a tradition, and uh, yeah, but I think there are a lot of uh, like good uh, female members of the family, and they are very good uh, practitioners. Uh, probably even though they are not the uh, thorn holder, maybe they can also take other leadership roles to help grow the Dharma teaching and also help the family and help help, help the community. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, so let's sit and take some questions from the audience. As a Buddhist, my husband always say, you do uh, chanting and uh, reciting mantra, sutra, and you also make lots of donation. And how would that, all the things you did, um, benefit me and our family? This is my first question. That is um, good. Yes, if we are connected, uh, for example, myself, for example, I have uh, lots of friends and students who are kind of um, relied on me and ask me, and uh, I will do this sincerely to to Polygen to help whatever they need and they heal their suffering. And this is the, yes, you can, uh, like I mentioned yesterday, there's teaching with the donate and giving and taking. That's why, if you pray your husband, Will help. Yes. Even he doesn't believe in Buddhism, there's always some blessing there. And my second question is, uh, would you please share um, your wisdom about emptiness so that way I can share with him? That is a big question. Yes, and emptiness, <laughs> emptiness is, we talk a lot of emptiness, but there's always essence there. Is everything phenomena is like emptiness, never the same. It's changing, changing a lot. But essence is there to what you call um, the, the, like, the reborn, and uh, everything is never the same. It's just impermanent. But at the same time, there is essence there. So that's the um, big question. But if you practice Buddhism, you will learn. If each of us has some wisdom leading us, if we really follow that to, to concentrate, do some meditation, then it will show that what to do next. But just talking emptiness, emptiness means everything, which means it is everything emptiness. But there is essence in there. And my uh, third question is, um, as a lay practitioner, especially for a, a woman, how do you balance their family life and um, also practice Buddha Dharma? Thank you. The, I usually call Dharma is daily life. Those are the lamas, monks, and nuns. They have nunnery, monastery, they stay, they support it, and they do it all the pray. But lay practitioners us like husband, wife, we have to raise children, go to school, work, and so forth. But every day of your life, just to, you know, in the Tibetan Buddhism also says human life is how the, what the precious, most precious in the life, which means we have opportunity, we can do things. We have physically, we have everything around, especially like us, and all the teachers and teachings, and uh, living, everything, freedom. So since you get up in the morning, you should be happy. Oh, I'm happy, I'm still alive. I want to do something for good myself and my family, and extend it for my neighbors, whole world, and this is thinking. That's the positive thinking, positive attitude. And that helps lead through the day is happy. And that is part of your Dhamma practice, for lay practitioner. But everything you do, you think something do right, and helping others with from sincerely. It, that's why we say it has to come from heart. You want to help somebody and give maybe I get something back. Don't think that. You have to do unconditional work, unconditional love, unconditional like how you do your own children. So this is will help. 
it. So the, you, they can never say, you know, any lay people were, uh, can be enlightened if they have a ra the right path. Yes. Wow, it's good Man to know this. It doesn't matter, any race. It doesn't matter. I had to have a good heart. Thank you so much. Thank you. Hi. Um, I have one question. Uh, may I ask is, uh, what's the most challenge you're facing, uh, you think, when you uh, fled from uh, Tibet? That is my first question. I mean, the most challenging thing you think you have. Do you have challenges this thing? You do myself? Yeah. I don't recall I done tremendous things, but I feel I'm good. I have done something in this life, so benefit others, try to teach something positive, and raise uh, my family, and try to go to teaching wherever I can, whatever I can do. And I lived this, I'm 84 years old, I still maybe a few more years, who knows? And so I always thinking, and myself, I'm very happy and can do this. Thank you. Hi, uh, thank you, Dr. Mola, very much for coming and give the talk. Um, one question I have is uh, you mentioned 4% of Tibetan women become nuns, and there are nunneries in Tibet. Uh, is that still the case now? There are still quite some nunneries in Tibet, or this is in the old age before you left Tibet? Yes. I just recently visited in the Tibet last month, and uh, I uh, offered, supported many nunneries. And those nuns, uh, some are nunneries, uh, only problem there is a limit. You can have so many each nunnery before anybody who wished to go. But now this each nunnery has a lot, so many nuns. We have in around the Sakya, and there's two nunneries I visited. One is like 250 almost. One is like, last time I visited only 25, now it's 37. But they have limited, they have to get a pass, kind of passport from government to get in certain things. Otherwise, yes, they are nunneries, and these nuns are very good uh, practitioners, and of course, the nun, nuns in India and Tibet, and they have a debate like monks, and they do very, and I also heard some people, um, patrons who want to ask, pray for monastery or nunneries, and they like to do none of this because nuns sit, stay there and do until pray done. And monks and maybe not doing some get up and get, walk out. So anyway, the, these are very good. And then um, old nuns, like uh, my time before, there are still nuns I heard in, still in the cave do practicing all of their life. But like I said, it's before the Tibetan came out in exile, and women are not out because men, in lamas, monks, dukus, or so many of so the women are not really even practitioners. They do the retreat. They uh, do their own practice, not so much going around the teachings. But now they are, yes. Uh, so the teachers at the nunneries are nuns. So there's no like uh, male lama teachers at the nunneries. Um, I would say most nunneries have the just nun abbot you know, or abbotness, what you call. But some lamas um, who are you know, qualified lamas and temples uh, or tukus can't go give a teaching, certain Mahayana teaching, so they can practice. But like our Mahayana practice. We have to have received the certain teachings. Without receiving transmission and teachings, we cannot practice. So the, yes, the male lamas go there teach and not live with nuns. Okay, so in general, the Buddhism teachings in the nunnery, are they very similar to the uh, Buddhist institute or monastery for monks or uh, anything special uh, for nunneries 
or maybe not as uh, stringent as the monks. Oh, you mean the, the, the teachings and Tibetan, and India and those places? Uh, yeah, I mean, just compare the nunneries and the monastery for monks. Are these very they're similar? Very similar, yes, they're very similar. And uh, uh, even now, uh, nuns have a more, like I just mentioned, uh, His Holiness give a Geshe Ma degree, which is equally is the, you know, Geshe, which means a doctrine degree. And this is just first time happened in uh, Tibet history. So nuns doing debates, and nuns do all what the monks are doing. Yes, equally. Yesterday you mentioned about you in Xerophon, uh, Tibet, and climbed the Himalaya. Just imagine that it is still very difficult from nowadays. So would you please share your insight? How come you can be so strong? I think leading by Triple Jim and Ayatara guide me and help me, uh, like all other the people who are to guiding from the triple gym. But it's a true. Uh, when I came out from Tibet with three children, the youngest one is just about a year old. He's still diaper on <laughs> and crossing the Himalayas. And it wasn't easy. But we left country because we don't want to give up Dharma. That's why we left. And then, like I said, uh, sometime in my life, I lived in a palace in Satya. I raised by my wonderful family in East Tibet, and lived in the Satya, married with the head of the Satya queen, and lived in the palace. And then uh, crossed mountain in the refugee camps, and then came here. Uh, we were bought from the Rockefeller Foundation for three years grant. Ever since, we cannot go back. So here, I had to do, I wrote this book, first book, I think I have to see. And uh, I give the first book to the His Holiness Dalai Lama. And uh, he was very happy. And he was saying that this is very good because it gives courage for the other Tibetan woman. Because you are in Tibet, you are first lady. And here, your American servant, which is true. I worked, mother, grandma, everything. I, I am like, working for Tibet, now American. Yes. Yeah. So that's why now, on, since uh, after I retired, and I try to do much as practice myself and help the others teaching. Not just women, men, anybody who needs in my own experience, my Sherry. I also grateful lots of men who supports us. Thank you. I'm only talking to the women, but men are wonderful helper. Lot of things. Yes. Without like Ayatara even said, there's no men if there's no woman. It's equally. But she wants to remain reborn with the woman to can help the all the beings. Thank you for more. And my last question is, there's recently there's a movie called Wonder Woman here. I feel the, uh, I, I was so attached by the, the uh, Wonder Woman's compassion. And so when I saw yesterday's topic, Dakini power, is there any special training for, for us to female, for us female to like receive some kind of special training and to become more powerful to help the sentient being? Because that is so beautiful. Oh, what kind of power? I don't know. I, just <laughs> <laughs> I only would just recall the spiritual. Oh. And you have to, in a Tibetan Buddhism, mm -hmm. you cannot just pick a book, read. Mm -hmm. Or you can say, I'm, lots of my Western students will sometimes say, I'm Buddhist. Many years, I've read so many books. I went to lots of classes. But that doesn't mean you're Buddhist. In the Buddhism, and, uh, it's necessary you have to receive the refugee vow, which is the, some commitment there. And after you receive that, then it, the teacher and student have commitment. Teacher on um, triple gym will protect you, guide you. 
and the students follow that guidance. But finding teacher is the very hard. Today, I would say there's so many young teachers, lamas, and all kind of, I don't even know the lots of them. But uh, you have to really find right teacher, not just follow their ranking, or they look, or they dress good, or only look what their background carry the transmission, lineage, who are their teacher, then you go for it. Once you have it, you don't need many teachers, then you'll follow that. That is in our Mahayana Buddhism. There's many teachers, some are good, doesn't matter, men, women, nun, or monk, doesn't matter. It's just something that answers your question, something you're connected. Usually we can tell once, first we meet, if you talk, you kind of tell that. And most times people go just look all written so much about background, His Holiness, it's all those. That doesn't mean anything, you have a connection. And Fomu, you're saying about this connection. I told my husband, if I saw like a Fomu, I feel connection. But my husband was said, that's not, um, it's not logic. That's okay. So what should I answer him? That's okay. That's okay? okay. Yeah. All right. Leave it like that. So I have a question about uh, the software engineering profession. So in this profession, there's actually a misbalance of uh, the genders. There's a lot more guys than uh, girls. So what do you think uh, could help uh, to balance the, uh, the genders? Because to to me, it seems very good for uh, for a woman to work, for example, in the software industry because it's possible to work from home. She can take care of her family when she needs to. But what uh, what, what do you see are the obstacles, and how can we help attract more women to help balance this industry? I think that we all know: be nice, listen, and listen what they want, how they talk. You may have a connect. You may can help. Uh, she may can help you. You may can help her. Uh, so this is just a gender is really not much difference. Only the connection with your uh, thinking or your wisdom or your related or most independent will call it the karma. We always related, and most uh, I would always say to best things have to be nice with your parents. And the parents, if you take care of parents, especially mother, you will be happy life. And this is the all, only when we pray, we always say, every prayer we say all mother and all sentient beings. Because we consider that there's some time I was your mother, maybe the years, who knows we are. But something like we are here today, it's just there is some connected. I believe every time I believe if I have somebody to closer and talking or feel, and this is some lifetime we had some connection. Yes, so it's most important patient, and especially women need patient. Thank you. And they are very sensitive. Women are more sensitive, so you have a give a patient and you always find the right path through your wisdom. Okay, I, I want to ask the, the last question. Uh, so because we are now living in the Western world, um, and especially in, like in companies like Google, we have very um, diverse background, people from, come from different countries in the world, they have different uh, religions, and maybe a lot of uh, atheists, uh, they have different belief systems. Uh, so what do you think is the best way for us to like, uh, promote Dhamma teachings or to help more people uh, in Google or in the society? All the religion I respect. Yeah. The, all the religion, spiritually, they are helping the all beings, whatever they need always. But what we need is everything in today's life, um, we just too fast. Everything new, oh, you have to have that new. You don't need it. 
And so slow down, think, do I really need this? Uh, things, materials too much. And also, and when you have something, somebody says something you didn't like to hear, you just patient. Listen, not answer right away. So this kind of helping for calmness and communication and the peaceful world. So this is because, it's like I mentioned yesterday, some people have one you did again, another one. If you have one car, I need better car. Just like iPhones, <laughs> everything. It's too much things. If you know how to work, that might be helpful. World is lots of things. For example, I have an iPhone. I only know how to reach out or to call. It has fancy things, but I don't know. So why I need that? So something you really sometimes you don't need. Yes, if you have one car, you need second car. You cannot drive two cars at the same time. So it's just slow down and do little meditation. Doesn't have to be Buddhist. Just a little bit down, the patient talking, anything, just think more than do more. So I think this is the leads to easier and peace for everyone. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you again for your inspiring talk and your advice. And also thank you for the hosting team and all the audience for your time. Thank you. Thank you, thank you.